Hey, seventh graders. The last couple of days we've been talking about how a lot of organisms have shared or homologous structures, but how based on their environment, we see a lot of differences in those shared or homologous structures as well. And that kind of makes them either more adaptive to their environment or um, if we were to put them in a different environment, maybe even less adaptive. Okay, so we've really been digging into how that environment can cause these homologous or similar shared structures to have differences to make them, again, more adaptive and less adaptive. And in the last lesson, we really talked about natural selection and how natural selection and adaptive and non-adaptive traits tie into this. Today's lesson is lesson 2.4 and 2.5, evolutionary history. And your learning targets for this lesson I can build a timeline to show how long it takes for an evolutionary change to occur. So when we're talking about maybe one common ancestor population that are put into two different environments and start to develop differences in their shared structures and maybe even end up developing similar, or excuse me, different species, we're gonna talk about just kind of that time frame and how long it takes for these changes to happen. Because I've said it over and over again is these evolutionary changes don't happen over weeks, they don't happen over months, they don't happen over years, they happen over lifespans. So again, we're gonna kind of take a look at what that time frame actually looks like. Okay, moving on to activity one, it's your notebook. So I want you guys to open up your OneNote, add evolutionary time to your vocab. Evolutionary time is the very long time, again, emphasis on the very long time, that spans the history of Earth from the very first cellular life to present. And key concept number five, add that to your key concepts. Key concept number five says over many generations and very long periods of time, again, emphasis on very long periods of time, Many small changes can build up to large differences in body structures. Okay, so again, this isn't just something that happens overnight. Um, it's not just a mutation that causes a completely different structure. Okay, these are usually small changes that happen over a very long time. Okay, and you guys' warm up today. Click and drag the sequence of events to put them in order. Okay, so you guys are going to look at it. It really doesn't matter which order you guys put them in, but you guys are mainly looking at reading these statements and then putting them in a sequential order. So two descendant populations are very similar but have very small differences in their structure. Okay, it's kind of almost like a cause and effect. Okay, an ancestor population is living in a stable environment. Two descendant populations look very different even though they may have similar structures and a common ancestor population gets separated into different environments. So you guys kind of want to arrange them into the correct order of what kind of happens first or what kind of happens last, or like I said, almost a cause and effect relationship there as well. Okay, go ahead, take a second, pause this video if you guys need to, to complete activity one notebook and activity two warm up. And when you guys are ready, we'll move on to the card sort activity. All right, so this is the card sort activity. You guys are going to first start by doing this little sorting tool down here. So the link's right here for you guys. It looks like this. Okay, so thinking about evolutionary time, launch the sorting tool activity. Your goal is to begin to understand evolutionary time by investigating the timeline and moving the images from the toolbar into the correct locations on the timeline. Some tips for you. The timeline moves from the past on the left to the present on the right. So where we're at nowadays is on the right. You guys will see that there's a little bit more going on as we get closer to the present, okay? Meaning that there wasn't a lot if we look at the beginning of Earth, okay? This means larger numbers of years ago are on the left and smaller numbers of years ago on the right. And then 500 million years is half the length of 1 billion years. So 50 million years is 1 20th the length of 1 billion years and 100,000 years is 1 10, uh, 10,000th the length of a billion years. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at that sorting tool. Basically, you guys have these occurrences here. First mammals, first land plants, first multicellular life, formation of earth, first fish, first humans, first living things, and dinosaur extinction. And then underneath them, you guys can see kind of their time frame and where they fit in. So use the tips where it talks about the different time right here, 500 million years ago, 50 million and 100,000 years ago, to kind of help you guys interpret these years here and figure out kind of chronologically what order they go into. But then also you guys have to think like, all right, 
formation of Earth, that's probably going to be the first thing. If this is 5 billion years ago, then 4.6 billion years ago is going to be what kind of comes next, okay? This is 4 billion years ago, and 3 billion years ago, what kind of goes in between that? So you guys might find something that's billion years ago, okay? And then it's not until 1 billion years ago, again, figure out what that's equivalent to down here, okay? And then you guys can kind of see, all right, between 1 billion and today, okay? Uh, again, according to your tips, we've got 500 million years is half the length of 1 billion years. So if we're looking at this halfway point, probably about right here, I would guess, okay, or here, one of these two, I'll let you guys kind of figure out which one's which. That would be 500 million, excuse me, 500, yeah, 500 million years ago, okay? So whatever one's closest to that is that midpoint. Okay, so figure out where each of these little pictures go and where they fit using Earth as kind of your jumping point. Okay, and then once you guys are done with that, you guys will go ahead and screenshot that on slide five. You guys can make it bigger. I don't care if you cover the picture of the nice dinosaur. Okay, and then once you guys are done that, we're going to go on to the second part of the card sort. So go ahead, if you need to, pause this video, finish that first card sort activity, and then let's take a look at the length of time it causes changes to happen. So this is a little bit different. Okay, so the second part of the card sort is you guys are looking at how long it takes for structures to change. Okay, so we're actually going to be arranging cards based on the amount of time it takes for something to happen versus kind of like the timeline you guys just did. So your goal is to sort the structure change cards using your idea ideas about how long evolutionary changes take to happen. So if we're talking about maybe moving a nostril hole to the top of your head, does that happen overnight? Does that happen within one generation? Or how many years does that happen in and how do we kind of rank these changes among like the longest time it takes for it to happen to the shortest time. So read each of the cards, discuss how big you think the evolutionary change on each card is, and then you guys are going to go ahead and arrange it from big changes that take a long time and small changes that maybe take a short time. Sort the cards according to how long you think the changes took with the longest times to the left and the shortest times to the right. So I'm going to kind of jump a couple slides for you guys. Notice here I have the longest time on the left and the shortest time, and then I have cards one through six here. So let's read the cards first, and then you guys can kind of go from there and arrange. And if you guys even want at home, you guys can kind of click and drag these slides as well to arrange. All right, I think this change took longer. Maybe do your longer changes at the top and your shorter changes um, in slide 12 spot. And then again, you guys can kind of indicate how you guys ended up arranging them on slide 13. So you guys can do that as an option as well. Otherwise, you guys can just kind of record your thoughts. So change one, okay, we have time one, the first, so excuse me, time point one, the first living things, and time point two, earliest mammals. So between those two time periods, this is what happened. Tissues with, uh, tissues and nerve cells develop, backbone develops, and limbs with digits develop. So from the first living thing to the earliest mammals, okay? That's gonna be your first one. Again, you guys are gonna think, all right, is that a big change? Is that a little change? Remember, big changes probably are gonna take longer, okay? Little changes probably not gonna take as much time. So you guys will kind of use that to compare to your guys' next one. Okay, structure change card two, time point one, one of the earliest species of the whales. So this is an image of one of the earliest whales that we know of. This species walked on four limbs and had well-developed front limbs and back limbs. And now if we look at the whales nowadays, the first whale ancestors to live entirely in the ocean, so they didn't need front or back legs as well. Okay, their front bones became shorter and their hind limbs and pelvis became too small for them to walk on land. Back limbs get smaller and smaller, nostrils move further and further up. So compare these changes that you guys see to the changes you guys see here. Which one had more change, okay? And does that mean it's gonna take more time or no? So arrange them, which one of these two cards between one and two do you think took the longest time, okay? Then let's talk about structure change card three. Again, you're gonna rank this in with the other two you've read about. Okay, so go ahead, read about structure change card three, uh, card four, card five, and card six. Once you guys kind of have an idea of what changes you guys are seeing and how long you think they might take, you guys are going to go ahead and drag these here to order them. All right, I think, you know, card one's going to take the longest amount of time, so I'm going to put it on this end. 
Okay, I think card four is going to take the least amount of time, so I'm going to put them here. Those are just guesses, of course. So based on what you guys thought, go ahead and arrange these down here on this timeline from the longest amount of time for those changes to occur to the shortest amount of time. Okay. Once you guys are done, you can pause this video, complete the rest of the card sort for activity three, and then we'll talk about the sim in activity four. Okay, so for this sim in activity four, you guys will be working, I guess, in class. The kids are working with a partner. You guys at home will have to kind of look at both of these things and compare. Your goal is to compare giraffe structures with structures of species that live a very long time ago to help you answer the investigative question. How did descendant species from a common ancestor become very different from one another? Okay, so you're going to open up the vertebrates mode of the sim. And then, so when you guys open this link, it should go into vertebrates mode. But if not, just click on the three horizontal line and choose vertebrates. Okay, and then you guys are going to look at a couple different species. Okay, so press the tree button to show the tree view. So I'm going to go ahead and move this a little bit. I'm going to go tree view. Okay. And then follow the instructions below to open two different pairs of study windows and answer the questions and follow the links. So if you are pair A, these are the instructions. So obviously you at home are going to be both A and B. So you guys are going to do both of these sets of instructions. Okay, go to the aerodactyl, uh, artiodactyles section of the evolutionary tree. So we're going to go to... Find the area dactyles. Oh man, am I gonna find this here? I feel like I'm getting closer. There we go. Took me a while, but here I am. Uh, Ardeodactyls. Okay. So find the Elomerix fossil and the fossil collection. So I'm going to go here and find the Elomerix fossil and the fossil collection. Okay, uh, you guys can even find its location and drag it to where it should go. So Elomerix, you guys can kind of read about it and figure out where it goes. They were grazing animals that lived on land about 25 million years ago. Fossils of Elomerics have been found in Europe, North America, Asia, and Africa. These animals grew to be two meters long and had several different types of teeth. Fossil evidence suggests Elomerics might have lived in many different environments. Some may have lived in forests, while others may have lived in shallow water, the way hippos do today. Elomerics are part of a larger group called ruminants, animals that can process plant for food in special stomachs with four chambers. Deer, cattle, yaks, and antelope are also ruminants. So if we go ahead and look back here, we can kind of see, all right, highly flexible ankle. We can see dense bones. So we can see some of those structures. And then we can figure out, okay, these could be closely related to hippos. Okay, um, they might also be related. So we can kind of drag and figure out, nope, they don't go there. So they're not more closely related to hippos. We could try a camel. Nope, doesn't go there. Or we could try maybe a giraffe. Okay, and figure out, all right, so these are fairly closely related to giraffes because, again, if you look right here, they're ruminants, and that's just something we read about, okay? So what you guys will do there is find the Eomerylix fossil on the fossil collection. I found out where it's located, but you guys don't have to do that. Open the study uh, windows for giraffe and Eomerylix. So I'm going to actually look at both of these and say, all right, giraffe, here's my study window, and then Eomerylix, here's my study window, and then I can compare them there. Okay, so read the species description and compare the images in the structures tab. So I want to go to structures. Okay, I can look at like their little hip bones here. I can look at their front arms. So we definitely have some differences in our ulnus, or excuse me, our ulna and even our radius. So in this one, the ulna is actually way smaller. Okay, and then there you, and then you guys can compare the size. So this is a lot smaller organism. Okay, and then what you guys will do then is once you guys have done both partner A and partner B, and I've kind of pointed this out for you guys, is based on these things here okay partner b you guys are going to go and find the acanthostega fossil in the fossil collection and you guys are going to compare that to giraffes as well okay so once you guys have done that and kind of compared all right these two giraffes and elomerics and then you guys would do this one here giraffes and acanthostega 
Okay, then you guys will answer these questions. Which fossil species was separated from the giraffe in the more distant past? So basically, which one's more closely related, okay, um, to the giraffe? So the Edomerix or the Acanthostega? Okay, the giraffe is much more different. So which is it more different from? Circle your answer there. Then it is from which one's it more closely related to because. And then tell me some of the things you guys saw when you looked at the structures and some of the things that you guys read in the description that kind of says that the giraffe is more closely related to one and not the other. Okay, uh, once you guys have that all done, you can just pause this video, finish up activity for sim, and then we'll move on to the modeling. Okay, activity five, modeling. Okay, population changes modeling tool link. You're going to want to open that up. It looks a little something like this. And basically, you're going to kind of model how some of these big changes occur. So let's look at our directions. Launch the evolutionary history modeling tool activity, population changes. In the modeling tool, a population is divided into two population in different environments. In each environment, different structures are useful for survival. Your goal is to show how the body structures of the populations in each environment might change over time. So do read the information at the top of the screen. Move organisms from the toolbar to the open locations in both branches of the tree. And then press indicate organism type and select an option for each organism. You do not have to use all the organisms in the tool bear. So let's take a look at this a little bit more closely. Okay, so here is our common ancestor. You guys will obviously want to label that properly. Okay, and then it's going to split into two different environments. You guys can read about environment A. Some adaptive structures in uh, environment A to help them survive would be longer tails and thicker backbones. Okay. The other half of the population went to live in environment B, and you guys can see here some adaptive structures for environment B, larger back limbs and larger front limbs, which are the legs and the arms. Okay, so time one is obviously a little bit longer ago as far as our timeline goes. It's further back than the population at time two. So this kind of shows the progression from here's the common ancestor. This is how they changed when they moved to environment B. And then maybe nowadays, what do they look like in environment B? Okay, so what you guys will do is you'll look over here at your toolbar. Okay, and we know that environment A needs to have longer tails and thicker backbones to develop. So that's going to be kind of our end result right here at uh, time two. Okay, so what might they have looked like in between our common ancestor here? and their ending point here. So I might look and say, all right, who has the longest tail and the thickest backbone here? Here's the thick backbone, thick backbone, short tail, long tail. Um, here's a kind of medium sized backbone. Okay, so if I'm looking, I'm gonna say, this is probably my population A at time two. So more recently, they have the thickest backbone, they have the longest tail. I'm going to look at the organism type and say that's the descendant senate species as well as this one. Okay, what might the midway between these two organisms look like? Kind of what shows how they were developing and to turn into this from this. Okay, you're going to do the same thing for population B, which one represents basically the animal that has evolved at time two in environment B, and then what does the midway look like? like? So look at what should go in this box, and then kind of what's the midway point between these two organisms for here. Okay, once you guys have your model done, make sure everything's labeled properly as far as all of these blue boxes. Okay, and then you'll go ahead and screenshot your model here. And then answer these questions. How does this model show how species can share a common ancestor uh, but can become very different from one another. And what remains stable over time in your model? So take a look at some of the structures. What stayed the same? Okay. What changes in your model? Again, take a look at some of those structures. What got different? You guys can get some hints by looking at environment A and environment B. Finally, complete your homework. Click and drag the statements to order the items in the list from the most recent to the longest time frame ago. Okay. So we got first plants, formation of earth, first humans, first living things. Which one? Um, was the longest ago, that should be bottom of the list, so the most years ago, and then which one's most recent, that's gonna go at the top, so arrange those by clicking and dragging. Okay, and then finally, larger changes to body structures and organisms take circle either more time, less time, or the same amount of time than smaller changes. And do your wrap up, do you have any questions, yes or no? If you do, type them in there, and then four, three, two, one, how do you think you did? Finally, you are all done, make sure it saves, then you can go ahead and hand it in, and I will talk to you guys soon, bye.